something that I, I struggled with, and I talked to Sister Sister Ilhan Omar a little bit about it. Uh, is a piece of you that gets broken, especially when I grew up here. And I grew up in the most beautiful blackest city in the country where you don't let anybody tell you you're less than or humiliate you solely based on your faith or your ethnicity. Mm. And as a United States Congresswoman, I could not do that to my grandmother. Mm. Yeah, but you couldn't go see her either, could you? You were offered the opportunity to go to the West Bank and see your grandmother. And what did you do? You gave her the finger and gave... Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and President Trump and everybody else a finger. Because that's all you know how to do, Rashida Tlaib, is give people the finger. That's all you care about is being this radical uh, Palestinian that wants to drive Israel into the Mediterranean. You have bought off on that sick and twisted ideology to destroy a nation of people. That's why you've linked arms with Mifta, a group that says, you know what, Man, we can just deport the Israelis and they can live all over the world. They can live anywhere. They don't have to have their own land. This is Palestinian land. This is the land of Palestine. Get over yourselves. These, make no mistake about it. This press conference yesterday was two radicals who want the destruction of Israel and the United States of America, by the way. They don't like our country either, and they're serving in our Congress. They are wolves watching the uh, hen house, you all. Make no mistake about it. Omar and Tlaib want to bring us down and want to bring Israel down. That's why, instead of going with the congressional delegation two weeks ago and Kevin McCarthy, bipartisan, Democrats and Republicans went together, they couldn't have that. They had to go with MIFTA. And why do they want to go with MIFTA? They want to foment an uprising in Israel. They knew, uh, you know, the Arab Spring that was fomented by our government. They want to foment an uprising in Israel to bring about the destruction of the Jewish state of Israel. Oh, I'm not afraid to call them out. I know exactly what they want to do, and I know exactly what Mifta is about, and I know exactly what their intent is. And this whole thing about the boycott deal is all designed with one thing in mind, and that is to destroy the nation of Israel. Israel, by the way, is pretty smart about security. Chris pointed that out earlier. They're pretty smart about that. And they knew... You get a couple of radicals coming in here, and their whole goal is to push Israel into the Mediterranean Sea and turn it over to the hands of the PLO, the hands of Hamas, the hands of Hezbollah. And guess what? Then Israel is gone and lost forever. Now, what would happen if Israel were gone and lost forever? Why should we care if Israel exists? I know there are anti-Semites listening to me right now, because I'll hear from you. You'll write me an email or whatever. Sometimes you even call the show. Um, what happens if Israel doesn't exist? Well, first of all, instability immediately in the region, because then, then you have the various factions of Muslims fighting each other. Shia, Shiites, and all that, they start going at each other. Right now, Israel is a stabilizing force. No, they're not. They're the cause of all the problems over there. Yeah, where'd you learn that? A professor is where you learn it, University of Texas. That's where you learn things like that. White men are bad, and Israel causes all the problems in the world. That's what you learn when you go to university. Well, first of all, they are a stabilizing force in that region. Second of all, they're the only ones that do anything about human rights. And as just one, I'll give you two examples, just two examples out of myriad examples I could give you of the of human rights that Israel brings to that country. You know what Ilhan Omar supports? Sharia law. You know what Sharia law says? Women are chattel. Women are property. That's what she supports. That's what she wants to bring to the United States, by the way. Honor killings, you bet, you bet. If you don't follow the strict code of the Quran, you get killed for it, is what Ilhan Omar believes. And that's what she wants to bring to this country. But women have no rights. And here she is. She's a, you know, she's a woman of color in the United States Congress. No other nation in that part of the world, other than Israel, would give her that opportunity. Try it out. Let's see if she could rise to power in Saudi Arabia. The power that she has now in Saudi Arabia. Impossible. Cannot happen.
It doesn't happen. And yet that's what she wants the rest of the world to live under. No thanks. Shut up and sit down. No thanks. Um, here's the second example. While they were crying and pissing and moaning about not being able to go over there, the Palestinian Authority banned, same moment, same moment they're crying about not being able to go over there. Palestinian Authority banned LGBTQ organizing in the West Bank. You know the whole rainbow flag and all that? You can't fly that in the West Bank under the Palestinians that Rashida Tlaib worships. Can't fly it. No gay rights whatsoever. None. You know what happens if you try to express your gayness over there? They tie your hands up and toss you out off the top of a building. You want that in the United States? That's what Tlaib's for. So, yeah, the only stabilizing force in the Middle East right now is the only democracy in the Middle East, and that's Israel. And the people who want to destroy Israel need to be slapped down with all kinds of pushback, and that's what I'm giving them right now, all kinds of pushback. Because they're not going to get that from the media. Because the media, they go to college, see? They go to university. And what they hear at university, Israel's terrible. Israel represses the people. And and by the way, <clears throat> speaking of that, Geraldo Rivera, you're a jerk and a hypocrite. Geraldo Rivera on last night on Martha McCallum's show with Andy McCarthy, one of the greatest thinkers of our time. Andy McCarthy wanted to have a reasonable discussion about this. And Geraldo came on spit and fire. Geraldo, by the way, he plays whatever part he needs to play, whatever cultural appropriation he needs to appropriate. So sometimes he's a Hispanic. Hey, my name is Rivera. Gerardo Rivera, sometimes. And last night he was a Jew. Okay? And he's like pointing to the Star of David. He had a tattoo on his hand, and he's screaming at Andy McCarthy with spit coming out of his mouth. This is the land of the Palestinians. They're the Jews. They're just occupying that land. It's the land of the Palestinians. If you're, if you're really Jewish, Geraldo, uh, I, I encourage you, go to the, five, four, the first five books called the Torah, and the land is, the boundaries are clear clearly described in that in in the first five books clearly unambiguously described who owns what lands and what the boundaries truly are the nation of israel has reigned it in they're actually living within the boundaries that were given them by god almighty and geraldo when you're screaming at andy mccarthy like the jerk you were being last night you're not pushing against andy mccarthy you're pushing against god almighty good luck with that one geraldo good luck so what you saw yesterday was a display of two radicals who want the destruction of Israel. I don't want the destruction of Israel. I think they're doing a pretty good job over there the way things are. And I think they were right in banning them from their country. They get it. They know that those two were coming to foment an uprising in their country, and they said no. And they have every right in the world to say no.